Zoom there. All right. So again, thanks everybody for joining us today. We are here to talk about Giving Day strategy for the upcoming first annual San Diego Gives Day. My name is Bethany. I am here with the Mighty Cause team. Mighty Cause is the technology platform uh, that's partnering with local nonprofits to help make this day a success. And we are also joined today by Lauren Welch from Urban Corps, who is uh, one of the lead members of the local committee of nonprofits that is bringing this event together. So we'll be hearing from her in just a few minutes and she'll also be here for questions at the end. So today we are really here to talk primarily about strategy for your San Diego Gives campaign. We will spend a few minutes at the beginning talking about some of the basics of the campaign. If this is your first webinar or you're just kind of getting started with everything, we do have an intro webinar that we did a few weeks ago that uh, is available. The recording is available on the nonprofit toolkit for San Diego gives.org. I encourage you to check that out if you're looking for more detail on some of the basics about how to use the platform, how to get your page set up. Uh, we'll cover just a few details today, but uh, really, we went into more detail on that. Um, we'll spend most of the time today talking about strategies that you can consider for your Giving Day campaign, wrap up with a couple of key things to remember and keep in mind, and leave some time for Q&A at the end. So if you do have questions as we go throughout the presentation today, feel free to type them into the Q&A panel for uh, for your Zoom, and we'll make some time at the end. We'll try to get to everyone's questions question live on the webinar. If we run out of time, uh, we will follow up and get your question answered. So feel free to ask it there if you do have any questions. So to kick us off with a little bit of information about the basics of the San Diego Gives campaign, what it's all about and kind of where the uh, initiative came from, I'm going to turn it over to Lauren to chat for a few moments. Thanks, Stephanie. So yeah, uh, at this point, everyone uh, is hopefully very, very aware that uh, the date is September 9th um, with early giving um, starting August 15th. Um, to Bethany's point, this uh, idea originated um, from uh, really my brain back in December, which is kind of having this thought on, on the ability to have a regional giving day and we reached out to some other fundraisers and groups locally, and it really just started to go uh, from there. And so it's just really a great, uh, there's 12 organizations that are kind of a part of a, the steering committee that are running committees and working through all the pieces. Um, I do just want to say, and I, and I apologize, Bethany, I don't know if you're going to go through the rest of this slide or not, or if you would like me to. I'm happy to, whatever you okay. prefer. <laughs> okay, thanks, Bethany. So so yeah, I'll just say, I just wanted to say, welcome, glad you're here, happy to have you. If you've missed, uh, like Bethany said, I think the best thing, I've been getting emails about, hey, what do I do next? You know, where do I, you know, I'm starting to get into it, what do I do now? And the place that I've been sending everyone is really to the resources page of our website. If you missed, like Bethany said, a webinar, the meet and greet we did last week, uh, there's Q&A from the meet and greet last week that's posted, the slides, everything you could need, all kinds of communications toolkits, Everything is on that page. Uh, if you do have questions, the email you know there can also help after you've looked at that. Uh, and just one other thing, Bethany, we're working on um, setting up some like brainstorm marketing strategy kind of Zoom uh, touch base meetings. So those will go out in an email as well to everybody about those. But it would be a good place just to share ideas or thoughts or kind of just like a a brainstorming session. So we'll send those out as well. Great. Um, only other things to mention on this slide before I keep rolling here is um, the Love Them All Fund. That is a piece of uh, this year's event. And basically, uh, it will be there as an option for donors to give to uh, from early giving through the giving day and any donations made to the Love Them All Fund during the course of the campaign will be split evenly between all participating nonprofits. So hopefully, uh, that's another opportunity for uh, increased donations for your nonprofit as one of the participating groups. Um, just sharing here the info at San Diego gifts.org email address. Um, any questions you have about the campaign, the local effort, et cetera, um, that would be the place to email. 
We will cover at the very end of today's webinar how you can get in touch with Mighty Cause customer support if you have more technical questions about the platform, how to make a change on your page, how to update your address, et cetera. Uh, that um, will be all through the Mighty Cause customer support. So we'll go over uh, how you can get in touch with and access Mighty Cause support later in today's webinar. So a couple more quick basics before we jump into the strategy. If we break it down, the core things that your nonprofit needs to do to be successful in this campaign, step one, create your profile on Mighty Cause. So that's really what that first webinar focused on, on all the steps that you need to um, complete to set up a profile. Um, there's also some tips on that nonprofit toolkit that we've mentioned already to make your profile uh, stand out. Set some goals and plan out your fundraising campaign invite supporters uh, to perhaps become peer to peer fundraisers, promote your campaign, social media, email, etc. And then, you know, once early giving opens on August 15th, start raising money. And uh, all of the bullet points after customizing your profile is really what we're going to talk about today, giving you some ideas uh, for where to start when it comes to planning your campaign. Some of you may have participated in giving days in the past. Uh, maybe it's your first one. Um, but we'll aim to cover a handful of strategies that are going to be useful uh, and that we encourage nonprofits to consider uh, when trying to pull together a successful Giving Day campaign. As I mentioned already, that intro webinar will dig much deeper into your dashboard and your account on the platform. But just as a quick refresher for those of you that could use it as you're getting onboarded to a new fundraising platform, your dashboard on the San Diego Gives platform website has a handful of key items based on what you're trying to accomplish on the platform. The first page at the top will be the overview. That's gonna give you a to-do list to walk through a handful of key items to complete your profile and your setup, key metrics, your organization page. That's that profile that I've mentioned a few times. That's where you can customize that. Fundraising tools is where you can find the ability to create peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, add a matching grant, et cetera. A whole tab for reporting, lots of great reports online, offline. All your reports will be in real time, so you'll have access to donor data throughout. The ability to customize your checkout flow through the checkout tab. And then finally, your settings. That's where you can add and remove administrators. You can update your address. I know we've had lots of people with questions on how do I update my legal name? How do I update my address? All of that happens and lives in your settings. So again, just quick overview of the dashboard there to help you get oriented to the platform. When it comes to customizing your profile, of course, you'll want to add photos, videos, uh, description about your nonprofit and your mission and what your goals are for this San Diego Gives campaign. Um, but one thing to call out in particular is your metrics section of that organization page. You have the ability to control what goes into your metrics and what metrics you'd like to share. So would you like to show the dollars that you've raised or the number of unique donors or both? Um, you also have the ability to add a, an optional progress bar to your page. So if you do have a specific goal, for example, hoping to raise $10,000 as a part of San Diego Gives, you can add that goal to your page. And as you make progress during the campaign, that progress bar, bar will show your success to your uh, donors, give them sort of that visual experience of the progress that you're making with your campaign. You also have the ability to decide whether or not you want to include offline donations as a part of the metrics you're displaying on your page. Um, I'll show you in just a moment where you can add offline donations. But we definitely encourage if you are getting cash, checks, uh, corporate sponsorships that are directly related to the San Diego Gives campaign, um, you can post that on your page to help represent uh, the full success of what's being uh, contributed locally, what the local really lo local impact of San Diego Gives really is. Um, and then final point to mention here is you have the ability to start the calculation on your page from August. August 15th, which is the start of early giving. So uh, some organizations may have used the platform before. Uh, if so, 
that's how you can make sure that the metrics on your page are only displaying metrics that are relevant for the San Diego Gives campaign in particular. Reporting, um, I mentioned earlier, lots of reports available for you in your uh, dashboard. Online donations report will be updating in real time. You'll see key stats right on the platform, but you always have the ability to download your donations report as a CSV, which will give you the full detail on any uh, donation data. Offline donations, that's where you have the ability to post an offline donation to your page. Recurring donations report if you have anybody signing up for a recurring gift as a part of San Diego Gives. And in the future years, next year and beyond, hopefully you'll be able to take advantage of a donor retention report, which makes it very easy for you to see who uh, has given in past years of San Diego Gives and not yet in the current year. Uh, so again, just kind of something to look forward to for the future. <clears throat> um, you will, anybody who is an admin for your nonprofit will automatically receive a notification by email anytime a donation is made. If you or somebody on your team wants to turn that off, you're welcome to do that in your user profile settings. Um, but by default, there will be an email notification. So if there's somebody on your team that isn't yet an admin that needs to be receiving or wants to be receiving a notification when you get gifts, uh, that's the best way to make sure that happens, add them as an administrator on your page. And again, you could do that through your settings. Uh, two final pieces to talk about here when it comes to platform basics is uh, customizing your checkout flow. We really encourage every participating nonprofit to take a look at their checkout flow, understand and preview exactly what the donation experience will look like ahead of the giving day and customize it so that it feels uh, unique and personalized to your nonprofit. So you can do a couple of things here in this checkout tab of your dashboard. You can choose what donor data is important to collect beyond the name and email, which will be collected by default. Um, you can set up custom donation suggestions. So you can choose what levels donors can see when they get to your donation page. And you can also add labels alongside those so that it helps to reinforce the impact of your organization, your mission. Uh, so definitely encourage you to take a look at that and customize that, as well as the check the thank you uh, experience. So you can customize the thank you page that donors will see on screen when they complete their gift. So it's a free form toolbar there. You can add photos, videos, et cetera. And you can also uh, add custom text that will be plugged into the donation receipt. So, Again, here, we encourage everyone to preview that experience, send yourself a test email, uh, look at the um, preview of the published thank you page, just so that you know exactly what that donation experience will look like start to finish before uh, any of your donors start to give. So again, that was just a super quick um, refresher on some of the basics. If you have more questions, feel free to visit nonprofit support on uh, Mighty Cause at support.mightycause.com and check out the first webinar, the recording of which is available in the nonprofit toolkit. So now on to campaign strategy. We're gonna cover five kind of key aspects of your giving day strategy. First is goal setting, which is very important to take a few moments to do here at the beginning of the campaign. Um, kicking off a strong campaign with early giving, securing matching grants and what that can do to your uh, overall success, considering peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, and finally pulling together a communication strategy from now through beyond the giving day to make sure um, that you are really having a solid integrated communications plan uh, to build relationship with your donors. So start starting with goal setting, we always like to remind nonprofits to uh, set SMART goals, specific, measurable. You can read the, um, the graphic here, but take time to set uh, realistic and, and goals that are really going to, to be worthwhile for your team. Um, it's your first year participating in San Diego Gives Day, so it may be hard to know what is specifically reasonable. You don't have last year's success to compare to, 
Um, but try to take the time to, to think through those aspects of goal setting and goals can look very different to different nonprofits. You can have a dollar goal, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000. Maybe your focus is the number of donors that you can get to engage with this year's campaign. Maybe you'd like to use it as a chance to build out a recurring donation program at your organization, or you just want to raise awareness for your nonprofit or a specific new program that you're launching. There's lots of different ways to look at goal setting. Each nonprofit will have a slightly different approach here. Um, but by taking the time now to think through those goals, you can make sure that everything else that you do beyond that really supplements that key goal that you had in mind. You can track your progress towards it. You can get your whole internal team rallied behind the specific goals that you have. And uh, because this is the first year for San Diego Gives, uh, we'd really love to hear from you in terms of what your goals are for this year. So that uh, from the Mighty Cause side, from the side of the steering committee that's working to make this event a success, um, they want to know what your goals are so that they can help make sure uh, that you're being successful. So we would love it if anybody wants to post in the chat right now, let us know what your goals are for this campaign that you have so far. Um, and thanks uh, in advance if you're willing to share that with us. <laughs> so uh, again, just kind of quick refresher on goal setting. Sometimes it can be really um, appealing to skip this process and just dive headfirst into the planning, but definitely encourage you to take a quick moment to set some specific goals for this year's campaign. As we move on to uh, the concept of early giving, every once in a while, uh, nonprofits are unsure about early giving. It, you know, the focus this is September 9th. It's a 24-hour giving day. We don't want to lose, you know, the urgency and excitement of that 24-hour period. Um, and you're absolutely right that the focus of your um, drives and calls to action to give should happen on that September 9th date. That's when we really want everyone coming together and pushing to drive uh, attention, donors, dollars to the website. But early giving is a great opportunity to allow you, your individual nonprofit to build some momentum in advance so that when donors come to your page on September 9th, they don't see big zeros at the top of your page. They see that there's already some momentum, there's already some uh, seed donations perhaps on the page and that uh, just encourages them uh, that you know there's already progress happening, they wanna be a part of that. So just gives you a chance to build some momentum in advance uh, also, logistically, uh, it allows you to capture a gift and secure a gift. If somebody may not be around that week or you're hoping that they remember to check their calendar for the save the date they've put on there, um, it just allows you to secure a gift in advance and still have it count for the giving day as a part of the success of the San Diego Gifts campaign. Um, so when you think about the close supporters that you might want to ask for some of those seed donations, you can look to board members. We'll come back to your board a number of times today because they are key to having a successful campaign. High level staff, close volunteers, anybody kind of in that inner circle inner circle for your nonprofit would be a good um, person to consider reaching out to for an early uh, San Diego Gives donation. And then of course, as you start your communications, social, email, et cetera, when you have that link to your page, you may have some others that decide they don't want to wait until September 9th. They just want to go ahead and book their donation immediately. So definitely encourage you to come up with a plan for how you want to uh, begin to secure early donations to build some momentum for your campaign. The next strategy really, from the Mighty Cost perspective, one of the most important, one of the most impactful things that your nonprofit can do to be successful with your giving day is to secure a matching grant. So um, <clears throat> just a quick side note from the platform perspective, you don't have to have a donor pay their match through the platform. It's really uh, more of a display tool that if you do secure a matching grant, you have the ability to post that to your page and encourage other donors and visitors to your page that there is this bigger opportunity for impact. So 
We don't have a ton of time before September 9th. Um, so this kind of timeline we've built out here, the steps to follow, you'll want to do them quickly and or maybe with your prospecting, start with people you already have a good relationship, maybe people that have done a match for you for other campaigns in the past, people that have good, strong relationships. So board members, obviously, um, they are a great group to consider for a match, whether you have one board member that wants to give a large match or each of your board members commits, you know, $250 or something like that and you pool together all of their donations to be one larger match. Um, maybe a major donor gives every year uh, in the fall and you're just, you know, before the end of the year and you might encourage them to make their gift early so that you can repurpose it as a matching grant. Uh, look at who you have in your network that might be able to kind of transition another type of giving and support to be used as a match. <clears throat> Figure out what matters to those people. Once you've identified the, uh, the donor, um, the potential donor, obviously, uh, you'll want to figure out what's going to really appeal to them uh, based on who they are. Do they want the recognition? Do they want no recognition at all? Do they care more about, you know, business opportunities to share the logo of their uh, local uh, business? Or is it really just that they're driven by the impact of your organization and what uh, you'd be able to accomplish with the funds from their match doubled with the funds that they're able to help you secure? Once you know that, make your ask using that, of course. And you are all smart fundraisers. You know most of this stuff, uh, but just kind of pulling it together within the context of the giving day and giving you a, a quick plan to follow for the next month. Um, when it comes to actually creating the match, posting it on the platform, there's lots of flexibility. So you can do a dollar for dollar match. You can do a match based on the number of donors that you get to give to your page. Lots of different flexibility. We'll talk a little more about that in a minute. Um, as I already mentioned with the board example, you can either post, um, if you do get uh, a handful of smaller donations that you wanna pool together, uh, you can post one big match opportunity, or if you get a couple of different uh, matching donors, you can decide that you want to post them uh, as multiple different opportunities. Maybe you want one opportunity in the morning on San Diego Gives Day and you wanna wait and introduce one opportunity later on in the day or only unlock your second match once you've met the first match. Um, there's lots of flexibility there depending on what your matching donor is interested in or what your strategy is and how you want to keep that 24 hours of giving exciting. <clears throat> so just, you know, for all the same reasons that San Diego gives adds urgency to your uh, appeal because, you know, it's a one day event and donors should give now, adding a match to your campaign in particular just adds to that sense of urgency. So as I mentioned, they don't, donors don't have to pay their match through the platform. They are welcome to if they'd like but they don't need to. It's really primarily a tool so that you can show your donors and get your donors excited about this match incentives that you have available. I already mentioned we've got lots of flexibility. You can do a one-to-one -one match, a two-to-one match. You can match you know, only the first $25 of every donation that comes in. You can only unlock your match if you have 100 gifts made during the giving day. There's really uh, endless flexibility that you have available. You can add a logo to the matching grant. <clears throat> and when you set up a match on the platform, you'll, you'll have kind of a tile like you see here in the image that will be added to your profile page. And donors will be able to see that. They'll see what the match is all about, who the sponsor of the match is, if you'd like to display it that way. And they'll also see a countdown in real time of how much time is left in the match and uh, what is left in terms of, you know, if, if there's $200 left until you meet the match or 10 donations left until you meet the match, that will be counting down in real time during the day. So great, uh, great way to, again, increase urgency and give you as a nonprofit more to communicate about during the challenge or during the giving day. So you can add that to your emails, 
add it to social media, post updates throughout the day on your progress towards that match. Um, so definitely encourage you to consider that. And if you do have any questions, once you've secured the match on how to best use it, how to get it added to your page, again, um, want to direct you to Mighty Cause customer support. We have a really helpful article that walks you through, you know, all the FAQs and what you need to know about setting up a matching grant on your page. So moving beyond matching grants, uh, I'd say the other key strategy that we encourage nonprofits to take advantage of is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So we call your peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers here generally ambassadors, and ambassadors can look a lot of different ways for a giving day. You may not go all the way to peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, and you may just instead identify ambassadors that are going to help spread the word this year. They're going to reshare your social posts. They're going to forward your organization's page link to their friends and family, whatever it might be. All different types of ambassadors are useful. But today, what we're talking primarily about is peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers as ambassadors. And a giving day is a really great opportunity to uh, either build on this strategy if it's something you've seen success with in the past, or jump into the strategy if you haven't really done a lot of peer-to-peer -peer in the past. Um, it takes a different amount of work. I'm not going to say more work necessarily, but it is a different workload, of course, to engage peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, and we often hear from nonprofits that they're a little daunted by it. It feels like they're maybe asking too much of their supporters. And so I wanted to just start with a couple um, key reasons to encourage you to consider peer-to-peer -peer fundraising for this campaign. The first and one of the most obvious is that by engaging peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, you are expanding your network beyond the traditional donors that you already have in your database. So by identifying individuals that know and love your nonprofit and are willing to spread the word to their community, you now have access to their email list beyond just your own. So that brings in new donors, brings in more dollars, which is going to help you have a stronger campaign as a part of San Diego Gives Day. It's gonna amplify the efforts that you're already uh, pulling together as a part of your nonprofit's campaign. Um, but two that I like to always mention is that it has a, an extra benefit of building a stronger relationship with those individuals that become peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. For somebody that transitions from a donor to a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser, they have a closer relationship with your nonprofit now. So if you're looking along your you know, donor pipeline, that's a great step to deepen the relationship with that supporter. And it usually gives you access to kind of a new, new database of stories of the impact of your work. So of course, a key part of this whole thing is the message and how your nonprofit is going to communicate your message, your mission uh, to donors to get them excited to give as a part of San Diego Gives Day. But as we know, it is often those personal stories that donors can relate to um, on an individual level that get them excited about supporting a nonprofit. And when you activate these individuals that want to tell their story of why do they love your nonprofit? Why have they been a volunteer for 10 years? Why did they benefit from using the services that you offer, for example? Um, it allows you to kind of open up uh, a, new, a new set of stories that you then have to, to share and reshare um, to continue to get donors excited about the work that you do and, and your impact in the community. So <clears throat> on the Mighty Cause platform, there are lots of ways that you can take advantage of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. There is uh, the most simple, which is just an individual can come to your page, click on the fundraise button and start a fundraiser for your nonprofit. You have the ability to create a template, a fundraiser template for them. So that if you do have a few uh, individuals, a few board members, for example, that might be creating fundraisers as a part of San Diego Gives Day, you can kind of pre-fill most of the items on their page, making it easy, even easier for them to get up and running. Um, so you have, they can just start an individual page if they'd like, or if you know you have a dedicated group or you want to encourage a dedicated group of individuals to fundraise together, 
you can take advantage of our team or event fundraising tools. And so the team fundraising page is the one that I've got an example of here. In this case, you get each of your board members to create their own fundraiser as a part of the giving day, but you create this team page which pulls together their efforts so that they feel like they're a part of a group initiative. You have a little more opportunity to encourage them, communicate with them, show them the success and the collective impact that they're having, and maybe even add a little friendly competition if that's useful for the group that you're working with. Um, so as I mentioned, the group setting can sometimes make it a little bit easier if you have individuals that maybe haven't fundraised before and aren't really sure what to do on their own. Um, adding them as a part of a team kind of helps them feel like they're not in it alone um, and it's easier to maybe commit to. Um, through, you know, whatever tool that you're using, whether you use a team campaign like this or just individuals, um, you will want to think about who makes the most sense to be a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser for your nonprofit. Um, board members, I've come back to them multiple times, but as I said, they are a key part of your success. Volunteers, staff, key, uh, longtime donors, et cetera. You'll want to also create and provide some resources to help these people be successful. So your board of directors, they should know that it's part of their job to help you fundraise, but it's maybe not their day-to-day -day job in the same way it is yours. So making it easy for them by you know, creating a sample email that they can just copy and paste to their friends and family, sharing either your organization's logo or a couple great pictures of your organization so that they have some content, some visually exciting content to add to any of the communications that they're sharing with their friends and family. Again, I already talked about the page template, um, whether you are having them create pages individually or be a part of this team page, there is the option to create a template for them, which will really streamline the onboarding. The other option is you can just create the pages for them if you know that that's not their specialty and they're happy to spread the word, but you need to do the work for them. Uh, we certainly see that happen from time to time. So in that case, you can create a page for them and just send them their link that they can focus on sharing. And then once you have this group of people that are hopefully willing to be a fundraiser for you as a part of this campaign, you'll wanna make sure there's somebody on your team, whether it's yourself or somebody else, that keeps in touch with these fundraisers during the campaign, provide them some encouragement, send them emails, tell them how you're doing, let them know what your goals are as an organization, as a part of this campaign, so that they can understand their role uh, in helping you to meet those goals. Uh, so the final kind of aspect of strategy that we're gonna cover here today is your communication strategy email uh, and social media as uh, really the primary options. But of course, uh, there are other ways that you can communicate with your donors. Um, and a great step for today is really evaluating what are all the channels that you might use to communicate with donors, email, social media, your website. Do you have any in-person events happening between now and September 9th? Do you wanna plan any in-person events between now and September 9th, et cetera? Um, so identify what are all those different channels that makes sense for you to focus on. You don't have to have a strong strategy for every single channel that you could possibly use, but figure out where your donors and your audience tend to really listen to you uh, and engage with you and focus on those channels primarily. So email, of course, is always going to be one of the most effective ways to get people to actually convert and make a donation. So whatever your set of strategies and channels is, we definitely encourage you to build out a strong email strategy. Make your plan ahead of time. What emails are you going to send when during the campaign? Perhaps you wanna send an email when early giving kicks off to let people know to save the date for September 9th, but oh, hey, by the way, if you wanna give early, you can do that now. Um, what's your series of reminders ahead of the day? And what do you plan to communicate during the giving day itself to make sure that you're finding that balance between getting your donors exciting, getting them to convert and not over communicating and, you know, uh, reaching beyond that limit. So plan out your schedule ahead of time. That way you can 
look at your schedule as a whole, make sure that you do have a really comprehensive email plan, but you're not over communicating and you're not spending your time in the middle of the day like, oh shoot, I think we should probably send an email to our donors. Let's pull something together. What should we say? You'll give yourself more opportunity to be um, reactive to the hopefully fun um, atmosphere that's happening on the day of if you plan some of this and schedule it ahead of time. So focus on a short, consistent, and simple message. Uh, this is helpful through all your channels, of course, um, but definitely on email. Give people the key information they need to know, a big, clear button with a call to action that you want them to do. Take the time to A-B test and preview your emails, preview on mobile. The platform is designed mobile first and everything from your admin experience down to the donation flow uh, is going to look and work, work seamlessly on mobile. But most people will start from an email that they receive from you. So it's important to make sure that that has a really great mobile experience as well. And finally, if you have the opportunity, take some time to consider some segmentation of your audience to build out that email strategy. So you might want to send something differently to those people who have already given to your organization this year, or those that maybe give on a monthly basis to your organization. How can you adjust your messaging just a little bit so that they feel seen and recognized, but are still presented with a compelling opportunity to join on and support your San Diego Gives campaign. When it comes to social media, there are, of course, an endless number of platforms out there. Um, and most nonprofits don't have the time or the uh, bandwidth to focus on all of them. Um, so before you uh, finalize your strategy, think about where your audience really is and where do they tend to engage with you. Um, maybe you just pick one, you pick one or two. Depends on your organization and your audience. Again, here, just like with email, we encourage you to schedule your posts ahead of time. That way, on the day of the giving day, you have the opportunity to be interactive and reactive on social media. If donors are commenting, if donors are posting, if they're sharing their gift, if they're commenting on your posts, you have the space to respond and communicate with them in a way that builds that uh, excitement and conversation around the actual 24 hours itself. Um, might be a good opportunity to consider a budget for any boosted posts to help increase uh, the reach for uh, Facebook in particular. Um, and of course, again, many of you seasoned fundraisers will already know this, but um, it's that creative and engaging content, photos, videos, stories, et cetera, that's going to appeal to donors, make them uh, pause for a brief moment as they scroll their feeds uh, and see what, uh, what your campaign is all about. Um, and just like we've mentioned already a number of times, the toolkit on the website does have some sample uh, social media posts as well as some sample emails. If you would like to take a look at those and use those to help build out your uh, communications uh, templates. Uh, final kind of aspect of the communications piece here is considering the follow up after the giving day. So. <clears throat> within the platform, we already covered earlier today how you can build out a thank you page with custom messaging and insert some custom messaging into the receipt that will be sent automatically to donors after they complete their gift. So those tools are built into the platform for that immediate post donation stewardship. Um, but we encourage you to go beyond that with your follow up with your thank you. Um, so, of course, prompt and personal thank you really uh, can be helpful and important, especially for uh, larger donors, first time donors, etc. So uh, making a plan now, of what is that thank you experience going to look like so that on the giving day or even from early giving and beyond, once people start giving, uh, you and your team, whoever is involved, know exactly what that thank you experience is going to look like. And you can just follow it to make sure that in the hopefully hectic experience of getting so many donations coming in that you don't miss that opportunity for um, immediate uh, stewardship with those donors. Uh, beyond the kind of initial immediate thank you, um, it's definitely 
a great idea to keep in mind what does that slightly longer term follow up look like if your goal is to raise $10,000 or buy a new truck for your programming or whatever it might happen to be, how are you gonna communicate with donors in a month, two months, three months even to let them know what you did with the funds that you raised through San Diego Gives Day? That is a great way to make sure that you're continuing to look at more of a year round approach to stewardship and communication rather than just the one time thank you, get on your newsletters and then you know get an appeal next year as a part of San Diego Gives Day. Um, and finally, uh, hopefully this campaign will bring in new first time donors to your organization uh, that are learning about this campaign and coming to search and discover local causes that they care about. Um, and also perhaps uh, activating new first time fundraisers for your organization that haven't done so before. So making a special plan for how you're going to take care of those new donors and new fundraisers and kind of what does the welcome series look like for them after they um, do this kind of engagement so that again that stuff doesn't get lost in uh, maybe the hectic experience of the giving day or the immediate post giving day uh, follow-up and reconciliation you're doing internally. Um, I mentioned this on our initial webinar but I'm just going to mention it again here to participate in San Diego Gives Day uh, you absolutely do not need to upgrade to the Mighty Cause advanced features, um, but there is a subscription available that you can do either monthly or annually that has lots of great upgraded tools that might be of interest to your nonprofit, depending on your needs, your plans, and what other tools that you use on a year-round basis. Uh, for example, if you use Salesforce as your CRM or you use MailChimp as your email program, uh, might be a very worthwhile uh, consideration to upgrade to advanced so that you can take care of um, direct integrations that will help uh, streamline the data entry process for your organization post event. Also, we have a number of other integrations available, the ability to create a text to give keyword so that you encourage donors to text this keyword and receive a link to make a quick donation on mobile embeddable donation form for your website, maybe something that's more of interest on a year round basis. Um, but we have a number of other tools available. Again, totally optional. You do not need to upgrade. You have all the great tools, matching grants, peer to peer fundraising, everything we've talked about so far, you have access to in your dashboard. Um, but wanted to make sure you all know in case any of these features will help make your fundraising more effective and or more efficient as a part of San Diego Gifts. So closing us out here with a couple of key things to know and keep in mind. We've talked about the toolkit a number of times already, um, but we can't mention it enough because there's lots of great resources there. The recording to this webinar and the previous webinar and meet and greet will be available there. There are tips and how to's, the ability to access Mighty Cause customer support and some key helpful articles. San Diego Gives Logos, a communications toolkit that I've mentioned as well. So if you haven't checked it out yet, go to sandiegogives.org uh, and click on the link for the nonprofit toolkit to access those resources. I mentioned Mighty Cause customer support before. We are really your go-to when it comes to any kind of technical support. You need help adding a logo to your page, updating your address. Um, if you're having any trouble setting up your uh, EFT for direct deposit disbursements, all of that kind of stuff can come to the Mighty Cause team. You can email us at support at mightycause.com. You can visit support.mightycause.com and there's a whole host of articles and walkthroughs available there. Uh, we are available Monday to Friday, nine to five, um, but also on the giving day, we will be available for 24 hours so that you can know and your donors can know as well. We are here with you when it comes to the 24 hours of the giving day. Uh, and finally, we've covered this many times and hopefully you know it, but August 15th, early donations open and September 9th is the giving day. So with that, I will open it up for any questions. Uh, we'll just take a few minutes here to answer any questions that have come in. If you have one that you haven't posted yet, feel free to uh, do that now. Uh, 
All right, uh, question on um, matching grants. Uh, it looks like uh, somebody has received a specific matching operating grant um, and they need to secure matching funds in order to receive it. Uh, that is a great example of a matching grant that you could post on your page uh, to help allow your donors during this campaign to realize if they help you uh, raise that much as a part of this event, you will be able to unlock this uh, matching operating grant. Um, you are able to uh, publicize, you know, if the donor is interested in that, uh, you're able to add their logo, add their name um, as a part of the actual um, feature on the platform. And then same thing with your emails and social media as well. Uh, as long as they're comfortable with that, great opportunity to, um, you know, to promote their support. Um, next question is, I can't find my organization in the Find Your Cause page. Any idea why? Uh, I would say reach out to us at support at mightycause.com so that we can uh, help make sure that you're fully registered and, uh, and see why you might not be uh, finding your cause there. Uh, and it looks like we don't have any other questions at this point. Um, so I will go ahead and uh, end today's uh, session. Again, if you do have questions, feel free to email support at mightycause.com or um, info at sandiegogives.org, depending on what your question is about. Thanks for joining us Bethany. today. Yep. Bethany, I'm sorry. Did you see Nina's question in the chat? Uh, let me see. Sorry to cut you off. Nope, nope, that's okay. I was looking at the Q&A. Ah, so uh, that's a great question. Uh, the question is, will we be getting donor payment information to import into another database? If somebody signs up to be a recurring donor, I will need the credit card information. Great question, I'm glad you asked it. And the answer is that you will be getting all the donor information, but, it will not be such that you could import the credit card information from our system to a new system to keep the recurring gift going. Um, that's just not really an option. So if you don't want your donors, if you don't want visitors to your page to be able to give a recurring donation via you know, the San Diego Gifts platform because you manage recurring donations through a different tool, you have the option in your uh, checkout flow customization that I showed you to turn off hide the recurring gift option. So um, I, that would be my recommendation there. You're not going to be able to transfer uh, the credit card token and have that recurring donation continue. They are, of course, able to continue their recurring gift on a year-round basis through Mighty Cause, uh, and you'll continue to receive those funds on a year-round basis if anybody does sign up for a recurring donation uh, through the platform. But if you'd like to make sure that they don't, because you already managed that in a different system, then you can go ahead and hide that option in your uh, checkout flow. Um, and so with that, I think we have covered all the questions. So uh, thanks again for joining us today. We will post the recording on the toolkit here shortly. Uh, and good luck with the San Diego Gifts campaign. Thanks, everyone.